the hills alive with the sound of rambling. Morning. Jason here for another Robinson's Ramble and I think today I'm going to be buying a lottery ticket because I've just got the last space outside Rydal Church. A uh, new one for me so uh, join me if you will while we go around Bearfield Horseshoe. Starting at Rydal in the Central Lake District and just over a mile north of Ambleside this was one of Wainwright's favourite ridge walks. The route was described by him as a great horseshoe of grassy slopes below a consistently high skyline, simple in design and impressive in altitude. The circular route is just over 10 miles in length and has over 900 metres of ascent. It's a fantastic route if you like to bag your Wainwrights with eight of them along the route, all of which I will be getting to today. This is one if you were in uh, have the inclination to uh, bag some Wainwrights this is definitely a good route for it now immediately I would say if you are starting this route by the church or by the road stretch off first because it gets steep immediately <laughs> there are different routes from here as well if you want to take uh, the coffin route that's just been it's past the left but we are beginning our fair food, fair field horseshoe route to Nabscar, our first Wainwright. We've only just started and I'm completely out of breath. But there is a good reason. Here's a short incline, just I take too much after my dad. I like to do a circular, number one. And number two, I also like to get the hard stuff out of the way first. So this is why I've gone this way around uh, the horseshoe. But immediately, I mean, come on. Look what you are rewarded with. It's uh, in January, so it's a bit of a short day. I'm a bit dubious whether I've uh, begun this uh, early enough. I got here for just before half ten. And as I said before, I've got the, uh, the last space outside the church down at Rydal. So it is already quite low, even in the morning, the uh, sun. So it's just bouncing off uh, Windermere down there. But uh, oh, I can't keep looking at it. I'm, so, I'm getting flashes in front of my eyes. But all of it, yeah. All the way around here. Come on. What a payoff for a bit of an incline. I think I'm halfway there. Let's keep going. Oh, <laughs> whoop, made it. So, of course, you'll notice a walking guide I did in 2023 in the summer when it was a little bit warmer. Of course, Lothrig Fell's over there, and that's overlooking like Nabscar is uh, behind you. Rydal Water and the caves just over there. So, chances are I'll bob back into my uh, older footage of Lothrig Fell because I know I've got my drone up for that, and then I can do a big arrow for the thumbnail of where Nabscar is. Eh, not just a hat rack. 
Well, not at the moment, anyway. Right, nearly there. Just realised, I'd better stop to show you actually each Wainwright in turn. So, Nabscar, just over there, just past it now, and on to number two, Heron Pike, which is up, just up here. It's more of the wind than the cold at the moment, so that's making me go there, 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 there. We'll get there, we'll get there. Anyway. You're rewarded with quite a few nice vistas. <sighs> Heron Pike, here we come. Ooh. Yeah. Sibby you up so I can try and hide the microphone as best as possible because I think the wind starts here anyway number two done Heron Pike right here on to number three uh, it might be more b-roll than me chatted away we'll find out because <laughs> I'm not at the highest point yet that's Fairfield over there so uh which is good luck. See how we go. Almost a great rig. It was at this point of the walk where I caught up with two lovely ladies from Grasmere and their beautiful doggos. And also, unfortunately for all of us, it was at this part of the walk where it got a little bit blustery. Oh. Oh. So the wind's picked up a little bit up on the way, great rig. I've had some wonderful company from these uh, two wonderful ladies from Grasmere which I think they've got their sensible heads on they might be going back down and I'm going over to Fairfield on my, to on my Todd don't blame them This is a part of my rambles that I always love, getting to know some like-minded individuals who are aware of the benefits of getting out in the great outdoors and what it can provide for your positive well-being. We could all see that the closer we were getting to the peak of Fairfield, the snow on the ground and the wind chill were both increasing. Fortunately, we were all prepared with the correct clothing. Let's face it, we all decided to go have a walk in the lakes in January. Preparation is most definitely key.
I'll get that down so you can actually know what I'm talking right now. Here we go, so top of Fairfield and uh, look at with the snow on top of it as well. It's absolutely gorgeous. Just a little bit of icing on top of its head of the halfway mark. Ably assisted by uh, <laughs> our new friend Loki. <laughs> and uh, of course you've got Helvellyn over there as well, the striding edge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I use that sound every time. Uh, over there of course, going that neck of the woods. And uh, still near, just on the other side of that ridge over there. And we will continue the horseshoe very soon. What's your Insta? Uh, yeah, same again. Robert, Embarrassingly right. enough. We might follow you already. <laughs> Loki! Embarrassingly enough, if the logo looks like that, you're going to be close. <laughs> it looks familiar, you know. Yeah. Oh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does look familiar. We've probably follow you already. Oh, bless you. Oh. So. <laughs> oh, no, it's good to do these things. <sighs> it's just neat, Oh, guys. Right, well, we'll so, pop off because it's getting cold. I so. do not blame you. I, I lied. I'm going to have a sandwich anyway when I get yeah, to, I uh, in the shelter here somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, absolute yeah. pleasure. <laughs> See you soon. Enjoy. <laughs> Zoop. Aha. All right. So it took me uh, and uh, walking with those lovely ladies before about two and a half hours. Oh, hang on. Yeah, yeah, no, about two and a half hours to get up here. That sounds about right. Meaning, if this is precisely halfway, being Fairfield, I should get to back to the car for about half three which is fine, we'll still have daylight. But is it exactly halfway? That is the question. So, let's get a good pace on. Oh, I just love being up here. Look at the sunshine, the snow. It's just, it's making me feel all right, even with this wind, even with this wind. <laughs> oh, loving it. Right, return leg and uh, more Wainwrights. Yay! It was at this point of the ramble where the altitude may have got a little bit to my head. The hills are alive with the sound of rambling. I'm all right, I'm all right, I promise. Just getting up to the next way in right now. I've lost count, there's so many on this old shoe. Uh, but uh, Great Crag? Heart Crag, Heart Crag, uh, this one. But I thought it'd be a good time just to uh, give you a, w a bit of a tip as well. I mean, you know, of course, I'm walking in January, some beautiful snow up in Fairfield, some gorgeous, just blanket of snow uh, covering the top. But if you are not 100% um, with any particular route, if you haven't done it before and you're not, you know, completely au okay with it, keep regularly checking uh, if you've got like a uh, hiking app or some sort of navigation app that you're still going the right way. Or a good old-fashioned ordnance survey map, always very reliable. For example, uh, first, yes, it was the first weekend in January, uh, I decided to uh, do with the Old Man of Coniston. Uh, which is that direction over there. Uh, uh, at the first weekend of 2021, completely underprepared. Did not, uh, hadn't done it before. And it was snowy, much like this, if not a little bit more so. And by the time we got up to the tarn to climb up to the uh, main part of uh, Old Man of Coniston, I completely lost the trail. Couldn't find it. I was just like, oh, I'll just scramble up here, it'll be fine. And uh, I was fine back then. I needed the exercise, to be fair, but Oh, it was a lot of effort that could have been avoided with a bit of preparation. Yeah, look at that. That must sound wise after doing this for over a year. Goodness me. It's not always just, you know, check you've got the right footwear on. Ah. Right. So, yes, Hart Crag, Fairfield over here. I know the sun's going to be blinding it a little bit, but uh, on beautiful valley 
coming through. This is honestly, it's a wonderful walk. If you've uh, got the leg strength to just do the first bit, I mean, you could do it the other way around, I guess. Uh, that'd be easy enough. But uh, if you've got the leg strength to do the, the way I'm doing it, the sort of uh, clockwise, yes, clockwise motion, it's, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I think I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Maybe I should check a hike it up, Jason. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's well worth going this round this way round. Uh, because in uh, much of words, it's phenomenal, phenomenal. This is getting a bit embarrassing now. <laughs> so, I think those lovely two ladies, maybe the, uh, when I was on the way to Fairfield, I, they might have just been trying to be polite, going, oh, I think we've seen one of your videos. But then I've just bumped into another couple, just at Heart Crag then. Uh, hello, if you're seeing this, by the way. Uh, I was like, oh yeah, Shane Robertson's rambles. Like, oh my God, I've been recognized. <laughs> Which I suppose, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, Cause, it's, um, feels weird. That's all I'm saying, just feels very weird. But if my um, message is getting out there of all the benefits that you can do, and not just these ones, I know this is quite a hike uh, for a lot of people, but if you have a look at my uh, older ones, particularly my dad's roots as well, that were suited for beginners to intermediates, like Gummer's Howe and Little Langdale and ones like that, Clay Pites. They're a lot calmer than this. Uh, but much like any good relationship, <laughs> you uh, get out what you put in. So what I mean, of course, the higher you get, more lovely places like this you get to. So, a couple more wing rides upon this horseshoe. And we're going next to uh, Oop, 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 oop. High Pank, I believe. I lied. There's one more peak I completely missed out. It's a small matter of getting up Dove Crag first. Then we get to Ho and, uh, High and Low Pike. Ho Pike? The combination of High and Low? Yeah, okay, I'll use that. Dove Crag first. Still a bit of an incline. Oh, tough track done. Now, how to get back down. <laughs> what, do you think it was going to slip? It's not my first rodeo. I continued down the return leg of the walk. With only two Wainwrights to go, I decided to take a quick shot of me walking by. Yes, there I go. And I was quickly reminded that it was still a bit windy when the camera fell. Thank goodness 
the snow broke its fall. But afterwards, I attempted to try the most YouTube-y thing I could think of. Trying to sell non-existent merch. Two, two, two. <laughs> Why, hello. I can't see you, uh, can't say, can't say, can't say. <laughs> Why, hello. I can't help but notice that uh, you are staring at me and seeing what particular attire that I am wearing. Well, yes, it is indeed the Robinson's Ramble t-shirt. Now, there might be something that you are asking yourself. A. Why are you holding your microphone like Ryan Trahan? <laughs> to be fair, I understand it's not quite the same demograph uh, that's watching this that people uh, know who Ryan Trahan is. Big YouTuber, young lad. Uh, I'm old enough to be his dad, but he does this and holds the microphone so people can hear him. But uh, yes, are you wondering to yourself if this uh, particular attire is available? Well, I'll tell you right now. It isn't. Of course it's not going to be. <laughs> I've only got a couple of subscribers, well, a couple of hundred subscribers anyway, which is very nice, and it's very nice to recognise, uh, or get recognised, flattering in fact. Uh, I got recognised up at um, Heartcrag before, but it's a big investment. But in the meantime, yes, Robinson Rambles. Uh, if you do wish, uh, and you do like this, uh, I'll start that one again. If you have liked what you are watching, and there is, uh, I'm building up quite a, a bank of uh, different routes, not just around the Lake District as well, the odd one over at Yorkshire, I've got two over at Yorkshire in fact as well, I don't mind nipping over to that side of the uh, border, uh, but yes, if you want to, please, I'd be honoured if you uh, like the channel. Uh, subscribe if you're not already if you are thank you so much uh, it's the purposes of this channel as well as showing roots is of course the um, the benefits of positive uh, well-being that these walks bring uh, I I love this I do I absolutely adore this this walk of the Fairfield Horseshoe is amazing absolutely lovely but I need to get to uh, High and Low Pike now, and uh, now I've got the coat off, even though I've got the, uh, the thermals under underneath. It's a little bit chilly, so uh, let's get going. Yeah, that's a little bit better. <laughs> I uh, have noticed the past couple of months, I live for the hell of Ellen as well, I seem to have this strange habit of removing items of clothing now, more recently, uh, during this walk. Sorry about that. Uh, my apologies. Uh, but if you wonder where the microphone is now, I keep it under there. Let's face it, it's been a little bit windy, this one. And even a fluffy dead cat on top of the mic is not going to uh, cover all or, or disguise all of the wind that's wrapping around us. So it's uh, hopefully <laughs> you can hear me nice and clearly. And I'm a poet. I've really been procrastinating a lot on this. It's half two. I need to get back. It's January. Sun's getting real low. I'm not the Hulk. So the Newlands Horseshoe has High Spy, Fairfield Horseshoe, High Pike. And uh, I'll be as careful as I can by the edge, but this other valley as well, oh, I really hope you can see this. It's amazing. 
the reverse stream you can see meandering round all the way through all these dry stone walls how long do these how long did these take to build that'd be a good uh, tiebreaker pub quiz question won't it what's the total length of all the dry stone walls in the lake district a bit <laughs> I think it's going to be a bit. Right, high pack done. Time for low pack. After, uh, ooh, hello. Let me just show you what I'm about to uh, attempt. <laughs> Yes, after High Pike, I uh, decided to go on the uh, other side of the wall, uh, primarily because the lighting, darling, the lighting. Oh, God, Jason's gone so Hollywood. Uh, but yes, it's uh, a little bit easier demonstrating, demonstrating a few things, even though it's a bit on the uh, whoop, precarious side. But uh, I wanted to show you everything we can so you can get a good idea of this part of the walk. <sighs> there we go. So you've got either what I've just done, which is on that side, or do that. Each to their own, it's entirely up to you. And I will uh, continue trying to get down here without looking like a nut or tit. Hopefully I've succeeded. Earlier on in the day, I had seen the RAF on exercises through the surrounding valleys, but unfortunately, I never had my camera on. It was only nearing the finish of this circular I was able to film not one, not seven, but three jet fighters going through the valley beside me. So here's me pointing out some planes like a geography teacher. Well, I didn't book them in <laughs> for the walk, goodness me. I had the microphone off, so uh, hopefully I've done a voiceover for it. But, uh, yeah, suffice to say, jet fighters coming through the valleys, quite loud! <laughs> Who knew? So there we go, just past Low Pike, top of this wall. The last way right of the route. There's been a few, but as you may have noticed, the sun is uh, ever increasingly lowering itself for the sunset. And uh, I've still got that much to go over there. So, probably less filming at this point, but I will uh, do a little bit for you, of course, show you. Uh, bits of the terrain, there go, <laughs> nearly, <laughs> like stuff like this, and uh, when we do get back to the car, there is a piece of equipment for, uh, I would always recommend, and I believe the Mountaineer and Rescue uh, team always recommend for any hiker or rambler uh, to be having, so I'm going to, uh, yeah, get myself down in a quick fashion, and I'll let you know what that equipment is down in the car.
getting there. So, informative bits for you now on this uh, single track. Uh, you just follow it all the way down and then it goes into a footpath and then it follows it. If you, this is what, if you want to get to Rydal Village, if you park there, and it follows the, towards the right and then keep right and takes you a footpath along, uh, I think it's the formal gardens in Rydal, Rydal House, round there, round the, uh, round the perimeter of Rydal House anyway, to get back to the car. But will the sun still be up when we get there? Oh. No. The sun, she go down. Which means, because as amazing as this camera is, it's not very good without a decent light source. And uh, I've got one in my bag, but uh, it'll be glaring right at the camera if I have to wear it. So I'll see you back at the car. I did take this quick bit of footage on my phone though as a point of reference for the end of the footpath. If you parked in Rydal, stay to the right of the stream and follow the footpath just past this wall and you'll start getting yourself towards Rydal Hall. Ah, hello, we have made it. Oh, let's see if I can do a time check now for you. Oh, uh, ten past four, ten past four. So, started just, uh, yes, just before 10.30. Finished at 10 past four. You do the math, you can do it. I'm uh, a bit jiggered. But what I do want to say about that, goodness me, that has to be one of the best first impressions I've I've ever had for a walk. It was amazing that the drama of it, the, the oh, I'm going a bit uh, dark. Now, this is what I'll go uh, back into my first impressions. This is the bit of equipment which I've been re uh, reliably informed that Mountain Rescue was saying, bring it with you bring it with you because oh my word hello that's a bit spooky it's a head torch so if i put it over here i might look a bit uh, better although i am a little bit blind now <laughs> don't look into the light but yes this has easily been the best first impression i've had for a walk um by far just the views going through both valleys on either side of the horseshoe seeing how velen at the top of fairfield with all the um yeah all the snow uh, covering the place it's been phenomenal phenomenal and not forgetting but it's been that low sun that i wasn't able to really see uh windermere and ambleside because the uh, sun was bouncing off the water so it was very tricky but that uh was an amazing walk and uh, I hope you uh, have uh, been received a bit of inspiration uh, from this all as well, because I'll, I'll tell you now. So I'm 44. So, yes, mid 40s, uh, pretty much middle age or getting to the cusp, getting to the cusp of uh, middle age as well. Uh, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I always used to do the low level walks I used to do with my dad. And I would have when I thought about going up. Helvellyn, Scarfell, Pike, etc., etc. At that time, I would have been, oh no, I'm not fit enough for that. And it's only now, getting into my forties, that I'm doing these bigger walks and pushing myself a little bit more. And if, depending, I, you know, I don't know what age you are. If you're not very inclined to do these massive, huge walks initially, start with the smaller ones. Build yourself up. I'm just trying to prove that you know you've. You've always got time to uh, get better. And if you want to see some spectacular views for yourself like this, go to it. Get rambling. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it'd be an honour, as I said, if you are not subscribed already, please give us a subscribe. I uh, have other walks that I want to do. If there are any particular walks that you have in mind, uh, particularly around the Lake District, that you want me to go on and have a look and have a little research through, let me know in the comments. Please do. Please do. And uh, share away if you so insist. So very much. 
Thank you so much. That has been an amazing day. I uh, am quite knackered. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a wonderful remainder of your day. Happy rambling. You are getting very nosy, aren't you? Would you? Oh, you don't want to say subscribe? No? No? Hello? Would you like to say, have a look at the other videos?